guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of XC Shop Critique. If this is your first time in my YouTube channel, um, this is the place for anyone that has an XC shop to learn more on increasing their sales, um, learn about SEO, branding, social media, and much more. So if you feel like this channel will be helpful in growing your XC business, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel um, so you can stay updated with the most recent videos and make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. So today on this tutorial, I'm doing a critique on the shop called Oz Italy. The owner is Joanne. So Joanne, thank you for letting me do a review. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I always talk about in all my reviews is the product photography. So I did an audit on this particular listing right here. So the first thing I wanna say is that the photo of your product that you're selling is the deciding factor whether the person is gonna buy or not buy from you. It doesn't matter the shipping costs or the customer review or the price itself. The first thing they see is the actual photo. So if you don't have a compelling photo they will not click, so therefore they will not end up going to your shop, browsing and seeing if this is something that they really want to buy. You have to make sure that not only is your photo compelling, um, that you also have a photo that when someone looks at it at first glance, they know exactly what they're buying. When I look at this photo, it's not the worst photo. However, I don't know what I'm buying. It looks like it's pink. And, only, and I only say that with all respect because the background has a lot of color. So it's very distracting. So when I look at this, it almost looks like a bucket with paint. It doesn't look like it's a face clay mask. Now, when I read the description, it makes sense because um, clay is, you know, this type of clay is black, it's like charcoal. So it does make sense. However, when you look at the photo, just solely in the photo, it's not clear and we live in a we live in a world now that people look at photos first before they read anything a lot of people actually don't even read to be honest with you we are consumed with visual images so your photo has to be very very clear of what you're selling if i am the potential buyer and i'm browsing through the xe search results and i see your photo and i still don't know what i'm looking at i'm just going to keep browsing to the next item I'm not going to click on it. I'm not going to buy it. Um, please keep in mind that a bad photo could prevent you from making a sale. It doesn't matter how amazing the product is. It doesn't matter if it does come from Italy, if it has like, if it's organic, if it has the high, high products for, you know, the best products and you sell it at a reasonable price. That doesn't matter at all because if the person can't tell what it is or if the photo is not compelling enough, you're not going to get the sale. So therefore, my suggestion would be to change your photos. Um, you have a couple photos that, like this one and the main one that you have in your page. Um, this looks like yogurt to me. Um, this looks like yogurt, like on top of a table. Um, it doesn't look like um, hair products or, or sunscreen products. It just, it can be confusing. Um, and for the potential person that they get distracted, a lot of people get distracted quickly. As soon as they they start thinking, what is this? They'll look this, they'll look to your right, look back, and then now they're looking at something else. So highly suggest taking different pictures. I found this shop that kind of sells like similar things to your to your shop. And I feel like they do a really good job at displaying the face mask, but also decorating it really nice with a background and and you're able to at least know that you're buying something that comes in a jar and it's enticing to go and click on it and um, they have like the products maybe it has ginger and that's probably why they have that here but it's really really nice the way that they did it it's clear i could kind of understand that it's something for my face um, so I would highly suggest maybe making something like this, that you have the product open, but then you also have the lid 
that says this is a face cream or this is a, a mask for your face and so on. If not, it's going to be confusing and people are not going to know exactly what they're looking at. Another suggestion would be to add a call to action. So add another um, picture saying, click here to favorite this item. You want to make sure that, that people that are interested in your products are favoring your, your products because whenever you add new products or you have something on sale, XC will automatically send them a notification that you have sales going on. That way they could come back and they drive more traffic to your shop. I will also have another one saying, click below to learn more about this raw activated charcoal face mask. If it has special ingredients or something that's very special about it, um, I will also include it as a call to action and say ingredients include and then have them listed. A lot of people uh, might browse through your picture and as soon as they see something specific that they either read before or they've been meaning to buy with that particular product or ingredient, it might end up making you a sale just because you're being more descriptive of what you're selling. Um, just keep in mind that you should use all 10 slots of the photos. You should, you should show off your product in different angles and then you should also show the product in use. So you should have like a male model or a female model wearing the, the mask or, or putting some on. That's a great way to kind of showcase um, the mask and show it in different angles and make it more stimulating when somebody is looking through the picture and make it more compelling for them to want to go ahead and buy the product. Um, make sure that the, the background is not distracting. I don't really recommend doing something like this because your eyes go automatically to the background and therefore the background in this being already dark enough it does make it a little confusing of understanding what exactly um, we are looking at or what exactly I'm buying. So I highly, highly recommend changing it. Um, the second thing I always talk about, the next item, is your SEO. So your SEO is search engine optimization. And this is the way that your shop gets found through XE search results and also through search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. Um, the tools that I'm using for this review, I will leave them below in the listing description. Um, that way you guys could go ahead and sign up for them. A lot of them are for free. A lot of them have free trials. Um, I'm using XE Rank. It's, this is a tool for all XE sellers. And this is a great way to measure your shop, to look up keywords, to look at your competitors, um, keywords, etc. Um, it looks like you're doing a really good job with your keywords. Majority of them are low competition to medium competition, so it's really good. I uh, just had a few things I did want to talk about. Um, the first thing is you don't want to just pick any keyword because it's low competition. Um, just to put a keyword if it doesn't match your item um, precise. So your item is shark cord. And here it says pink clay mask. So I wouldn't add those type of um, keywords if it doesn't describe your item to the T. Um, when you are trying to find your target audience, um, not only do you want to be very precise of what you are selling, you just also don't want to say pink face mask, but it's actually gray. Because then you're just targeting a different demographic, a different not the demographic, but a different targeting. That doesn't mean that they might not buy from you or buy this particular product, but you shouldn't um, do that because it's false advertising for, for, for one. And two, it could lead to confusion because they probably think they're going to get a pink one. A lot of people don't read and they probably type that and thought, okay, well, maybe they'll send me a pink one because that's what I was looking for. So just avoid using... Keywords that doesn't describe your item to the T. So just make sure you stick with keywords like, like this one is a great one here. Um, this one is a great one here. So just, just stick with things like that. Now, when you see a keyword that doesn't have any numbers, it's because the search volume of that keyword is very low. That means that 
a lot of people are not really looking for that keyword. Now, you could type in that keyword on Etsy and maybe find a lot of other stores that are using the same keyword, but that doesn't particularly mean that people are actually looking for it. So if you see that, um, I would highly suggest changing this one and changing that one to something else. The other keywords are really, really good, and this happens to be your VIP keyword. So that's the one that's driving you the most traffic. So therefore, you should have this keyword in the beginning of your title. So you should move it from down here to the beginning, and you should also have it in the beginning of your listing description. So you should move it from here to here, and having it in your beginning of your listing description it's going to help you with the meta description and to rank organically for it as well. Um, once you update your keywords, let's say you change this one and this one, um, make sure that you use all 13 or try to put as many keywords as you can here. I personally prefer to separate them by commas. You have some that have commas and then some have this line. Stick with one or the other. Don't do it mixed. Um, I feel like the lines do confuse people. I think commas is easier to read. It's the normal way that people read. So I would just remove the little brackets and just do commas to separate them. Um, I would do the same thing in the listing description. Just put a comma to separate them. It'll be easier to read for the person, easier to follow, and they won't get confused with the lines or the brackets being there. Um, now, another thing you want to keep in mind is that the first 160 characters is called the meta description. And this is what people see when they found you, found your listing on the search engine. And it'll have like the title and it'll have like, like a, a listing description, like a description of that item. Now, right now, yours is full of keywords, which is not the worst. However, you want to make sure that the meta description is enticing. So you want to make sure that you put here something about the product, why you want to use the product, you want to include the main keyword that we talked about, your VIP keyword, and you want to talk a little bit about the product under 160 characters. It should be compelling so that when somebody is reading um, your listing in the search engine, they're enticed to click to learn more about your product. So you definitely have to work on that because your meta description is not formed right now. Now, I do want to move on to, um, because you did a good job with your SEO, I do want to move on to listing description. That's the third thing. So think about it this way. Your photo is what made them click on the actual listing, right? That's what got their attention. The SEO is what made them found the photo, right? That's why they, they typed in something, saw the photo because of the SEO. Now, your listing description, which is this section here, is basically plays a significant role in whether you're going to make the sale or you're not going to make the sale. So the listing description should have anything and everything the customer have might have a question about. So make sure that you answer all their questions, how to order, what's included, what ingredients are included, shipping policy, return policy, how to contact you, um, these are important things. It, one, it helps build credibility. It helps close out the sale because they have all the information. And on top of that, it avoids confusion and it also avoids unnecessary messages to you. Now, you are going to get a large percentage of people that unfortunately do not read. And then they want to make a claim against your shop that this was never told to them. They didn't understand it. So it's really, really important that you add as much as information as you can to not only provide excellent service to your buyers, but also to protect yourself as an Etsy seller. Because later down the line, if somebody makes a bogus claim against your shop about a particular thing that they didn't read, is there already, and Etsy will abide by you and close out the, the case against your store. So it's important that you fill all this information. It's important that you think about um, anything and everything that you can. I think that looking at your listing description earlier, you have done a really good job with it. 
um, I think my only suggestion would be maybe set, do some type of emoji or something to kind of separate them or highlight the, the each section. So I'll show you what I mean by that. In my, sh this is one of my new shops that I created for, um, XC sellers to find marketing tools and I'm still working on it, but this is what I mean by that. So having little sections like this emojis or you could do like little um, diamonds like this next to the titles and this is easier for them to find what they're looking for um, and it separates everything and it's easier to read I think than having like a long um, section which is great because you've done a good job of, of explaining everything but this will separate each section so it's easier to read. I will also add a call to a, um, a backlink I'm sorry at the bottom of your store as a call to action. The reason why you want to put a backlink is, is because normally when people read the listing description, they will click on the back button and now they leave your shop and you want to avoid them leaving. You want to keep them longer in your shop. The longer they stay in your shop, the more sales you will make or the, the higher chances of you making a sale basically. So you want to make sure that you keep them in your shop um, as much as you can. And this will help you, one, get more views because hopefully they'll start looking at other products and also convert your views into sales. Um, so that's my only suggestion with your listing description because I do think that you did a really good job with it. Um, another thing was I did look at your categories and you did a good job with them. A lot of times people either look for items using tags or keywords and sometimes they look through categories. So it's important that you meet both criteria. That way, um, if you have a potential buyer that finds things through categories, they actually find your product. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the curation of your shop. And the curation of your shop is creating a brand, making sure that you have the same colors, the same consistency, that this product and this product looks like it's coming from the same shop. Um, the, uh, the looks of it, right? The, it's cohesiveness. Now, when I look at your products, it looks like it's different shops. This product looks like it's a different one from this one here. This one has a different background from that one. And that one has a different background from that one. So therefore, it's not a cohesive look. Having a shop that has a cohesive, this one's different. So Having a shop that has a cohesive look all across does make you stand out from the rest of the shops out there. I know one of your questions is how can you increase your views and how can you take that into sales? The first part of increasing your views is curating a shop that um, is very, very pretty, that people want to buy your item even if they really weren't looking for that item but they happen to click on the photo because it was very enticing and now they want to get the item because of it. That's how you get views into sales. You also want to make sure that your pictures are not cut off like this one here. Um, you want to make sure that you take the time to learn product photography. I know that at first when you open an Etsy shop, it's so many hats you have to wear, whether it's SEO, photography, creating the product, shipping and etc. So it is a learning curve and there's a lot of things we have to learn. However, by fixing these things, it's going to improve you and therefore you're going to get better and better and better at it. And then at one point you'll be able to look at your items and say, okay, let me try to curate them better and have a cohesive look. Um, make sure that you take the time to study your competitors, people that sell more than you in the same niche see what they're doing. I'm not saying to copy them, but get inspired by them. And if you were to look at the larger stores, like those prominent stores, they have the most amazing banners. Their banners have like their website. It has their social media links. It has like, you know, pictures of, of their products, like different products. You have to think about stuff like that. Nowadays, you could, you know, you could go to, I'll leave the link below, but you could go to like Fiverr.com and pay somebody to create a banner for you for as low as $5. So there are places that you could invest 
in buying product, um, buying a banner or doing your, your, maybe even your photos if you needed to, to take your store to a whole new level. Um, at the end of the day, you have to think about what is so special about your shop? What makes you better than the average, than the other, other shops that are competing with you? Um, you are in a competitive niche, so therefore you have to stand out from everybody else. Um, so you definitely will have to work a little bit more. I do think that your logo is pretty. I do like the fact that you have a photo that you can actually see your face. A lot of times people put like a photo with glasses or the photo is very far away. So you can't really tell who you're buying from. So I do like the fact that I could tell who I'm buying from. That's important. Um, I like that you have a tagline. You have your location, which is really, really great. Um, I like the fact that you put an announcement. You have like the links to your um, about me and your policy. And then I also like the fact that you took the time to take pictures um, and kind of introduce what your product is about and how you got started because of your daughter. That's beautiful. It's compelling. It's, people are emotional buyers and they really want to connect with you. And I think that that does help when you tell a story of, of how you got started and why you got started. So I think you did a really good job there. I like the fact that you have your social media here and you did a good job with explaining the shipping policy, especially because you are in in Italy. And I know that when you are in a different, I'm in the U.S. in Chicago. So when you are um, shipping internationally, I know that is a lot more expensive and it's a longer pr process of receiving the actual product. So it's good that you did a good job of adding that. I think overall... You have beautiful products, um, and your pictures are not the, the worst. It's just they're not the best. That's the only critique I have. Um, I would definitely work on improving your photos. Your photos alone will just changing your photos will drastically increase your sales and your views, um, and hopefully, obviously, your sales as well. But just changing your photos will make a big difference in your shop for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the other two links that you sent me. So this is your um, Facebook cover. Now, I will say that the Facebook cover is different from your Facebook cover in your shop. So when you're creating a brand, both covers should be the same. You shouldn't have a different one. You want to make sure that when somebody sees your Facebook page, they know that they know, oh, I know that store. I've been there before. You don't want to confuse them or think that it's two different brands. You definitely want to post on a consistent basis. Um, you want a couple of days without posting. Um, you want to make sure that when you do post, um, that you could, that you, well, you did put a link. So that's really good. A lot of people don't even put the link. So you did a link. You did a couple of hashtags. Um, I will definitely work on like you put like XC three times, you see? So that's why these two are not hyperlink and you put natural skin. So making sure that you don't overlook things on um, little things like that. I, I know I do that sometimes too. So making sure you don't overlook things, making sure that, you know, your grammar, like your comma is, is correctly done, making sure you have a call to action. So just making sure you say, our products are available at blah, 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 Amazon and our website. Make sure you click to view our products or make sure you click to shop now. Like tell them what to do. Don't just write the, the link. A lot of people don't even think of clicking. So make sure you do that. Um, with Facebook, if you're not spending money and you don't have a lot of engagement, it's almost like wasting your time. In my opinion, I would post on a regular basis only because the number one place that a lot of people search for products or companies are in Facebook. However, um, just post, make sure your post is nice, clear, that you have a call to action, maybe one or two hashtags, but post on a consistent basis. But I would invest more time on Instagram and Pinterest for Etsy. They do way better for Etsy. Um, for Instagram, it's the same thing. Um, you do have your logo here, which is in matches, so that's good. I will fill your bio a little bit more. Who are you? Where are you from? And why should people buy from you? The three W's. Try to 
answer those three questions. So I would definitely work on this. I would, um, if you're going to say follow us on Instagram, I would cap capitalize follow. That way it stands out. Um, maybe even use an emoji with a little arrow or something. Um, this is my Instagram account. So I have follow, I'll capitalize, and I have like little emojis. So maybe doing something like that. And then also working on cohesiveness, having the same colors, the same backgrounds, almost like the same thing you're going to do in your shop. It's important that you do that also on your Instagram, on Facebook, using always the same colors and sticking with those colors. Like I have three these three colors here and I stick using those three colors. I don't change them around. I don't use different colors. I stick with the same colors. So doing stuff like that keeping the same colors. Um, it will make your Instagram more cohesive and more nice. Um, make sure that when you are putting um, whatever caption here, make sure that you say in a call to action. So you did do that. But just tell them, visit us today, click bio link to view our shop because they can't click here. And there are people out there that don't understand Instagram. They don't know how, how it works. So it is better if you are specific to them by telling them what to do um, and guiding them on where to go to find your products. Um, but for Instagram, the best way to grow your followers is through different things. Um, one is by having a cohesive look, making sure that everything goes with the same colors, is cohesive. We all know that it's the same brand. Two is researching your hashtags, finding the hashtags that describe your product to the T. I always say use all 30. However, um, Instagram did put an update that you don't need to use all 30. Um, they want you to use anywhere. I believe it was from five to 10 hashtags. Now, the reason why they're doing that now is because if you use five hashtags, you're going to use hashtags that actually describe your product. After five hashtags, you might just start adding any hashtag just to have them. So therefore, now you're targeting everybody. So make sure that you find your target audience and just target to those people only. Um, also, make sure that every picture has a really nice caption. Uh, more than one sentence, if you can make it longer, is better. Because this is a company, uh, make sure that you talk about it once in a while how it got started, why it got started, things about the products. This is something so people could know the brand and get to know the brand. So these are things that you could incorporate on a, on a daily basis. And then also the bio. Don't forget to fix the bio and, and answer the three W's, who you are, where you're from, and why they should follow you. Don't just put follows on Instagram. They're not going to follow you. So if you are just saying that only, then no. But then if you say follow us to get skin skincare solution for whatever, they might follow you more now because you're giving them a reason why to follow you. So make sure that you do that. Um, but yeah, these are my critiques for your shop, Joanne. I think overall you do have a beautiful shop. You just have to tweak a couple things here and there. I think once you do that, then it should make a really big difference on your shop. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching and thank you for letting me do a critique. Have a wonderful night, guys.